Bro, I don't care, like, if you think that execution in newer fighting games is easy. That clip right there is just beautiful. A lot of people talk about whether fighting games these days are too easy for casual players. If you're asking that question, you know, what makes them easy? Is it because of mechanics, execution barriers being lifted, strong strategies that are easy to abuse, accessibility for casual players uh, to even the playing field, or like, what's, what's going on? Because I see that said a lot, like, are fighting games too easy? I think they're too easy. They need to make them hard again, all this kind of stuff, right? But I feel like the first thing we need to address is the video game industry across any level, no matter the genre, the niche, anything about that, it's all about profit, okay? It's a business. The higher ups that pay the devs to do this are obviously looking to make money. At its core, the FGC is still smaller than other esports, and you know, we're at a majority invested in and playing for passion instead of profit. Right? People people play fighting games because we like them. We're not trying to play fighting games to like, oh, I'm gonna like make a million dollars playing it. Well, some might but the vast majority are just playing because we like these games, right? That absolutely does not reflect what the people making the game is thinking. They're all about money. They just want people to buy their game. That's all they care about, basically. With that being said, the more people the devs can get to play, the more money they can make. And yeah, that does include casuals, obviously. So for all the people, all the weirdos that are like, oh, we're trying to gatekeep fighting games away from casuals, if you can't understand that it's all about profit and it's all about money for the developers, then you'll, you'll probably never get it. And you might as well just stop watching this video now. <laughs> With that being said, what in particular in modern fighting games causes people to think that they are too easy in a negative light, right? Okay, the first thing that we need to talk about is uh, inputs being easier in new games. If you look back at like, let's say Street Fighter 4, which many would consider to be the resurgence of fighting games, special moves in particular could be executed without doing the full motion. For example, a DP could be executed by inputting down, forward, down, back, forward, and punch button. Like, look at my inputs, right? Look at my inputs, right? By no means a full DP motion, right? Okay, let's look at this, right? This, for example, I don't care. Bro, I don't care. Like, if you think that execution in newer fighting games is easy, that clip right there is just beautiful. It's not easy to do. No other Street Fighter game before this had shortcuts as extreme as this. And there's been shortcuts like this in every Capcom fighting game since. Of course, at the time, many players didn't like this. At the same time, why is this seen as a bad thing? Like, I don't see why, why people even think that's a bad thing. Is that because, oh, people had to struggle back in the day to learn how to do DPs consistently on ST or Street Fighter 3, whatever. And now more people can do it. Like, is that why it's bad? I don't get that. Like, we're still playing a 1v1 fighting game at the end of the day, right? Like, that's still the same. The rules have just slightly changed. Like, to do the special move at the right time still requires timing and the skill set. It's just less strict. Let's move a little closer to the current day. One of the most drastic changes to Street Fighter in general, and that's modern controls in Street Fighter 6. Like, if you didn't know, SF6 has different control types, with the traditional classic controls still being available and the addition of modern controls, which gives the player access to one button special and super moves and auto combos, of course, as well, at the cost of a slight damage reduction. This potentially removes the execution barrier entirely uh, and allows players of all skill levels to easily pick up the game and enjoy it. But I don't see this as an easy way to play the game. Like, it's just different. But for example, playing against a modern player as opposed to classic, you need to take a different approach and almost rule out, like, inputs on reaction from the game right and you also need to consider the drawbacks like less damage and options in general at the player's disposal is still present and uh, for those who wish to take the game further they might explore classic controls to get the full inputs down and of course you can still use the classic inputs in modern to get the full damage so it's like a train it's like training wheels like in a way you know but there are some pros like tachikawa who use the modern controls to their full advantage um while still obviously being a very experienced player and being able to execute everything in classic, just the, the, the possibility of being able to anti-air so easily with one button, with Ed, for example, is just a huge strength. I actually think Grand Blue did this quite well as well. Like in vanilla, you had less cooldown and more damage if you use the classic input instead of the one button version, giving players an incentive to try and use the classic input whenever possible, right? But in Rising, they were going to remove this entirely, but the entire community revolted and the devs eventually gave in and added a drawback to one button specials with less damage as a combo star. So they, they did listen to the feedback and, you know, they saw the strengths and the weaknesses of that. So that's cool. Like additions of modern controls, right? You also have to look at how popular. Look at this. Look how popular 
It's made games like SF6 in Japan. Look at this. This is not EVO. This is just a Street Fighter 6 tournament held in Japan. Though the game is doing numbers over there. Yeah, you got to think about how many gamers like who wouldn't usually be interested or play a fighting game are now giving it a shot, right? And it's, it's really, really cool to see, man. Like people actually paying for tickets to go and just, just, just to watch, not even into play in tournaments. It's crazy. The Say Jam Slam as well, for example. This is a, this was excellent. Doing the Say Jam Slam finals at TwitchCon. This is such a big deal. And this is introducing popular variety streamers and VTubers and all of their audiences to the beauty of fighting games, you know? Like as a community, we should be happy that more people are shining a spotlight on our scene. Like, look at this, man. This is so cool. Being backed by Twitch, obviously, like it's a really cool look. And again, it introduces their audiences to the to these games. To be honest, though, I don't even know if this is really due to a game like Street Fighter 6 having more accessibility. I guess you could put you could put any two players playing any fighting game and they would get enjoyment out of it. But I think the fact that, you know, the game is more accessible. I think that just heightens the enjoyment of this even better, right? Like making making games, you know, a bit more lenient in terms of inputs and easily accessible for people. I think it just, all it does is just make it so more people can enjoy fighting games. And of course, the top level pros are going to be the ones that are still winning, right? You're not going to be seeing any unknown players come in and win in EVO because you know, doing a DP is easier, for example. Like, all the top-level pros are still winning. But yeah, inputs are one thing, uh, but how about the game mechanics themselves, right? As fighting games have gotten more advanced over the years, so have the mechanics within the games. Like, you'll never see a, a fighting game as bare-bones as the early Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat games with just two characters, two health bars, and a timer. Since those games, there's been so much added to fighting games, right? You've got multiple meters to keep track of, you've got defensive mechanics, you've got enhancers, parries, cancels, so much you have to keep track of. Some of these mechanics, of course, do become available after receiving damage or when the player is losing. I guess those have become to be known as comeback mechanics, right? Let's take a look at the comeback mechanic, bro. Marvel vs. Capcom 3's X-Factor, right? This mechanic can be activated at any point in the match, but it gets stronger with every character you lose with three levels in strength, right? You get level one X-Factor with three characters, level two with two, and level three with one. So this is almost encouraging you to hold onto it and use it later in the game if you're losing. Bro, believe me, in Marvel 3, one character comebacks are extremely common and happen a lot of the time due to how the game can just steamroll so easily, right? And how powerful X-Factor is. Like, look, we're seeing it right here with Apology Man with Scroll, man. But at the same time, this doesn't change the fact that the top players will still win overall, not by abusing a comeback mechanic, but because they are better overall at the game, you know? They have superior neutral, awareness and strategy like even though marvel 3 is a high execution game even if you remove the execution from the equation the better players would win more often than not because they understand how the game works at a deeper level than most right with 2x ko coming out next year we know that the game has obviously taken a more modern controls approach if we're going to look at you know street fighter 6 as a comparison but i don't think that's going to really have much of an impact on which players are going to do well or not i think that those that play tag fighters will obviously have the advantage from early on but with inputs being easier we may see more players jumping into the game and doing well who i don't know in the past may have been might have been intimidated to learn a fighting game and that's a good thing to quote my man ddp that's a good thing but yeah i think just because specials are one button i don't think that's going to interfere with like who's playing the game and doing well. Good players are still going to be winning. Like, you're not going to get people just coming out of nowhere and dominating tournaments su suddenly, you know? But there, of course, there are other things we could discuss, you know, in these games, like abusable ways to bypass neutral and get the advantage. But I think that's also debatable and it's not like a black and white discussion. There are gray areas in that too. And it depends on game to game and the tool we're talking about, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, basically, if you're getting cooked by modern controls and complaining, it's probably a skill issue. <laughs> There's just a little bit of food for thought there, you know.